Hi, and welcome. I'm Cassie Burton, and this is Curiosity Junkie. Today's guest knows how to get shit done. She's a podcaster, business owner, and business coach. She's also written a book and is hosting a small business summit. I'm worn out just thinking about everything this brave and bold woman does. Please welcome Chisa Penix Brown to the show. Hi, Chisa. Welcome to the Curiosity Junkie podcast. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Yes. Well, let's just jump in. We, um, we're just going to talk a lot about what you have going on. I met you at the She Podcast Summit, convention, yes. whatever it was, uh-huh. you were in Arizona, where I live. And I attended your talk, Give It to the People, I think it was. That's right. Yeah. And it was fantastic. You have such a great energy. And I'm always drawn to people with like that good energy, just like high vibration, lots of great information in your talk. So let's talk a little bit about like, I'm always curious, have you always been this like full of life kind of person? Or is this something that kind of came to you a little later? No, I've always been this person. And it's so funny. People ask me that it was another young lady at the actual G podcast. And she was like, is she always like this? And my husband was like, yeah, she's always like this. So (laughs) I've always been high energy. That's for sure. So most of the time people like to uh, tell tell people that I'm energetic. That's always the thing that I get. And I think that's a good thing because it's enough Debbie Debbie Downers in the world. So high energy, um, confidence is one of the things that I always have with my brands. And I think that, you know, it was instilled in me at a young age, you know, to be a person that holds your head high, you know what I'm saying? And to walk into a room with authority. So I always, you know, strive to make sure that I do it. But I think as you get older, things just come to you naturally. Mm -hmm. And I love what you said, because I always feel like you attract the people that are supposed to be there for you. And so, you know, when you reached out, I'm just like, of course, I'll be on the podcast. Yes, that was part of the whole point of going. But you attract the people that really understand who you are and kind of like why you are. And I think that makes a difference. Yeah, huge difference. So growing up, what was it like growing up in your family? Oh, goodness. Um, so I like to call myself a bonus daughter. So I'm in between um, <laughs> my biological mother and her sisters and brother. And then my grandmother and my grandfather raised me. So I'm kind of in between there where I got to be a grandchild, but then I also got to be a niece, a child, an extra child. I mean, so just like a whole bunch of everybody loves you kind of thing, um, you know. So I think that for me, it was a lot of goodness. And it was, I don't know, I think... Um, you get it from all different areas, if that makes sense, right? So you're able to really glean things from different people, but there was always a common thread of, you know, we always said, you know, the Penix girls, right? So it was always us. And, you know, you're just making sure that you, you know, represented the name well. And I think that when you look at families that historically probably grew up in the 70s and the 80s, 60s, 70s and 80s, you know, that was a really big thing was to make sure that you represented the family well. So for me, I think that... um that probably started this, this career path that I'm on now of being able to just understand that um, everybody wasn't raised like you, but you can bring a level of, of just confidence and you can bring a level of assuredness of who you are, regardless of where you're at. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. What a great message too. I love that. Well, so let's talk about what you're doing right now, because you're doing a lot. Like I was kind of looking at your website, refreshing my memory, and I'm like, Uh holy smokes, you have a book out. Uh You're getting ready to do a, right? We're going to talk about that. You're getting ready to do a a summit, like a business summit in January of next year. I I know you run the one podcast. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you have another one. Like you have so many things going on. Let's talk about what you have going on. But first, I do want to kind of visit, like, did you have like a nine to five job that you just said, you know what, I'm done and I'm going to do me and take care of me and do the things that bring me joy? I did a long time ago. So 2008 was when I quit my job and I had already worked and said, you know, this was going to be the time frame where we planned on what we wanted to do. So we saved money. 
um, for a good year, paid stuff off, did what we needed to do, got the credit right, all of that good stuff. And um, I've never turned back. So the biggest thing was figuring out something that you really want to do that does use your skill set. And to me, that's transferable. So it doesn't matter where I'm at. I'd still be able to run my business. Mm -hmm. And at the time, it was event planning, which I still do event planning. I do a whole bunch of events. But then it started to progress into social media. And that was before social media really started because everybody acts like it's been around forever, but it hasn't. And then now it's transitioned into podcasting because then I made the decision, look, I want to do the podcasting full time. So that meant, you know, Every level of progression built on the skills that you already had, but it still does take a slightly different version of you Mm -hmm. in order to make each thing successful. So I think that um, going through all of the different levels, it's like, for me, you go in a circle because some of the things that you started doing are still the things that you do now, or you revisit things. Something might not have worked before. And now that you have more money, it works. Now that you have more time, now that you have more experience, more connections. So it all just kind of goes in a big gigantic circle. And I mean, I think that that's, you know, part of what life is about, right? Is to look at your experiences that you had in the past and to do better with them once you get to the future. So that's really how I'm able to manage so many different things. Yeah. Well, I, um, I've noticed even with my own podcast, it just evolves. Like naturally Mm -hmm. it will evolve into what your passion really is. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about, and I don't know where you want to start. Do you want to start with your book, your podcast? Where do you want to jump in? Let's start with the book because that's right. kind of what jumped off everything else. So when I wrote the book, I was in a place of honest depression. I had, um, in a way, put some of my dreams on hold to help somebody else build their own business. Mm. And that ended up not working out well. And I said, I'm not going to do that again. And that's what led to the book because I felt like people needed a guide to get out of whatever they were in. So mm-hmm. I didn't know. And it's, it's crazy how, like I said, things go in a circle. When I wrote the book and it's called the 90 day focus, your action plan for success. My original intent was simply for people to hopefully leave their jobs and start a business. Yeah. And everybody started telling me it was a self-help book. And I'm like, no, it's not a self-help book. But the biggest thing in the book is about responsibility oh. and taking care of yourself. So this is before self-help was the big thing. Okay. And so then I started looking at it as like, okay, well, maybe it's a self-help book. <laughs> and then now what I focus on is we, we coined the term mental wealth. And mm-hmm. so I love the idea of mental health, but I think that health sometimes has a a negative connotation, not in a, people don't want you to be healthy kind of way, Mm -hmm. but because what I focus on is still business and now I focus a lot more on growth mindset, then it had to be something where we kind of pair those two together because I want you to be healthy because you can't get as wealthy as you need to be if your health is not there, but I want you to be wealthy for your spirit, your mind, your body, and your bank account. Mm -hmm. So all of those things kind of pair together. And so what happens is every time, and this is maybe a lesson for somebody, when you think things are in separate buckets and they're, you know, all over the place, there is a commonality. And it's similar to what you said with your podcast, you you go back to your passion. So for me, my commonality was obviously the 90 day focus, focusing on time and on yourself and building the life that you want. And that's how everything else then came about because this was written way before I thought about podcasting, but I knew then that I wanted to build some type of media empire. And it's like, I think things just work the way that they're supposed to for you to have what you're supposed to have. Yes, I agree with that 100%. And I love that. I did see that on either a post or on your website, the mental wealth. And I Mm -hmm. I love that because like you said, I think when we say mental health, people immediately go, oh, there's something wrong with you. Yeah. Mental wealth is like, own it and be the best. Keep your mental capacity in the the best place it can be. Exactly. Exactly. I love the way you put that. And that that to me is it's going to be different for each person. Mm -hmm. So like, even when we started the business, my husband and I started giving to the people. We were already doing our podcast, give it to the people. And then we decided, okay, well, what are we going to do together? Because there were a lot of changes that happened through COVID. And we decided, okay, well, we're going to do a business together. And we kept thinking about what name. And I'm just like, you know what we do together? We give it to the people. So let's use the podcast because it's already out there and then make that the business. So we made it official this August. 
And, you know, we decided, okay, well, what are we going to do that's different from what we were doing before? What can we do that combines our skills? So we decided to do curated business events, focusing on micro events is what I like to call them, or micro gatherings, where they're not more than 100 people. And that's one of the things we've always done big conferences, 200, 300 people, 400 people. But if you focus on smaller groups of people, Mm -hmm. you can have more connection, right? So if you think about it, I love She Podcast. I'm going to be honest with you. That's one of my favorite conferences I've ever been to. And I know that there were plenty of time that they built in for you to be able to talk to people. Mm -hmm. But I also think that for me, if it was only a hundred people there, I probably could have gotten to more people, right? Mm -hmm. It was so many people. It was so many sessions and I loved it. I just need you to understand. I really did because it was so many things I wanted to go to. And then we broke up and my husband went to one and I went to another. Some we went to together, but I would have, if it were smaller, I think we would have had more individual time. And I know that's, you know, contingent upon who you spend time with and what you do. Right. I was so excited to go to the next thing that, maybe I didn't take as much time to talk to individual people as I would have if it were a smaller conference. So that's what we focus on is that because what we realized is those conversations Mm -hmm. and that relationship building, that's really where the magic is that really happens when you come to conferences. So that's how, um, you know, the podcast focuses on BIPOC BIPOC businesses and women-owned businesses. Um, And and then that's the kind of the same thing that we do as far as we give it to the people is we want to highlight small small businesses. Mm -hmm. So it gives us the opportunity to do that, but also to let people network, to let them connect, to let them get mentorship. What we do at our conferences, um, and this will be the first one that we're doing in January underneath the Give It to the People brand, is making sure that people really understand what we like to call as the calm method. So calm is for you to clarify, it is for you to align, it's for you to learn, and then it's also for you to magnify. And I like to kind of mix magnify and monetize in because I feel like they're really, they, they really are cousins, right? Right. Um, So when we do that, I think that there's a way that things can be done. I think that there are systems that can be put in place. Mm -hmm. And that's what our conference focuses on because you get so busy doing the business that you might not really enjoy it, right? Mm -hmm. So even even with doing your podcast, we're so concerned with, okay, let's record. And I don't know, you know, a lot of people do it where they'll batch them. I like to batch things, put it this way, I got a month or more done. And then you publicize, but then you also want to let more people hear it and you got to market it. And, you know, do you get the chance to like, just be happy that you're a (laughs) podcaster, right? It's it's kind of that thing where it's like, and then you feel bad if you miss an episode or you don't put something out or you didn't do it. So it's like, you want to be able to have a system that works for you. Yeah. so that you can enjoy what you do. And so that's what we do, you know, with our conference and the Calm Method um, and just kind of showing people how they can do that and achieve a lot more, what I like to call a better quality of life. Mm, mm-hmm. Well, that's good. I really like the Calm. Calm. That's great. Cause it's yeah. so much power in being calm. There is. <laughs> and as excited as I am all the time. And I'm really like this, like I can be dead sleep and then wake up. And then like in the next 10 minutes, I'm like, like I'm, that's just my personality. Like I don't need anything to make me like that. If it's time to go, it's time to go. Right. But there is so much power in just being calm mm. and people just don't realize it. And when we're calm, a lot of times we feel like it's something wrong with ourselves because we're not doing something. Mm, yes, that story. But, wow. <laughs> you know, yeah, you, you have to give yourself time to be calm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I was listening to, um, I believe it was on Real Ass Affirmations this morning, yes. Flex. You had the flex uh-huh. on there. That was good. Yes. I was like, what the heck is flex? <laughs> uh-huh. It's just like, you have it. It's there. We all have it. We're wonderful. We're amazing human beings. It was just a beautiful message. So Thanks for that. Yeah, I like to empower, but you know what? I think like, you know, and I don't know how everybody else's session went, but one of the reasons that we probably connected and I would say, you know, did you saying, okay, well, let's be on the podcast. And I'm like, yeah, right. Is probably because I like to engage with people, right? Mm-hmm. So there were probably a lot of sessions that you went to that people just told you stuff, told you how to do things, but, 
And I love that because I am a, a give me the hard skills. Tell me how to get something. Tell me where app is. Tell me why to do something and I can get it. But right. for me, I think that I guess if you want to say the magic, the pizzazz, the sauce of it is and the flex of it is, if I can talk to you as an individual and you get something that that's the light bulb moment, that's the thing that you've been missing, that's the thing that you didn't think about. To me, it's so much power in that because you can see how you can use it for your business, right? Yes. So there had to be something where you're like, oh, shoot, I didn't even think about that. Let me go ahead and do that. And I always like to know what that is for people. So, you know, when you come into the session, you're listening, you're like, okay, well, I'm going to come to this session. It sounds a little crazy, but I feel like I'm going to get something from it. <laughs> and then you leave with something like, to me, that's just so important. And that's like the best compliment. Yes. And I did. I, I, what I really liked about your session was it was completely interactive. Like you just said, it's about connecting with getting to the people and you were like, Hey, okay. So tell me about your podcast and what do you have going on? And that was great. Like you kind of got us all engaged and then you gave real actionable steps. They weren't like grand things. They were simple things that I had never even considered that I was like, genius. Yeah. Let me write that down. Yeah. There were just a lot of little things that I I was like, they're small pieces, but they're huge Mm -hmm. in the grand scheme of things. So I Mm -hmm. I walked out of yours. And the one thing I really liked too, not only your energy, but when we were all done, you pulled everybody up on stage and said, let's do a group photo. I love a group photo. Yes. (laughs) I was like, so it was so personable. Yeah. I, mean, I felt connected to you. And that's why I was like, okay, oh. I got to have her on. I didn't ask anybody else from that <laughs> to go on the podcast. You, you're the girl. <laughs> uh, look at me. I'm so special. I'm so excited. That's so wonderful. But you know, um, I think that the biggest thing is people just have to realize how important talking with someone is. Mm. That's, that's, that's why we do this podcasting thing. And I know that everybody does it differently. So like, I want to give it to the people I'm interviewing people the same way that you're doing, but on real ass affirmations, I, I want to talk to you like we're friends. So we're having a conversation, even though you're not there for me to talk to. Right. But I do think it's a difference in talking to people and talking with people. So you know, when I'm having a conversation with you, I want you to feel engaged. You know, mm-hmm. I want it to seem like I care about what's going on with you. And the thing is, um, you know, when we get to this, what do I want to call it? I don't even think it's expert, but I'm going to just use that word for lack of a better one. You know, some of this expert, extra influencer, we have so many followers, yeah. you know, kind of level. It's like you lose some of that connectivity and it just is so much about you. And I'm not saying that I don't have that too, because I definitely, I love an accolade. I do. But at the same time, if I'm not contributing to your success individually, and I mean, if it was way more people in the room, we can't talk to everybody, but I want you to feel like you came here and, oh my God, she talked to me, you know, like Mm -hmm. I want you to get that. So I think that we can relay that type of message in our podcast and who we interview in the messages that we want to express to other people and the wisdom that we impart, we, we hear, we're here for that purpose so that people can understand who we are and, and hopefully makes them better. Yes. Yeah. And it just, it was just a great, great experience. The whole thing connecting with you in that moment. Like it really, it really was wonderful. I want to go back to the calm that you brought yes. up. And okay. when we, like you do the affirmations and I was just curious, I love journaling. Do you have like a a calm moment in your day where you kind of like organize your thoughts or put down anything you're working on? I write a to-do list like almost every day Mm -hmm. and whether I put it in my phone or whether I write it down, like physically write it down, or I may wake up with a checklist of things. Um, That's how I organize things because I see things in shapes and colors And then I have to prioritize what's going to work the best for that particular day. I may wake up and thought I was going to do 10 things and only get one or two things done. But I think that the biggest takeaway that I could say from that is not being so hard on yourself Mm. if something doesn't get done that day. 
um, because, you know, hopefully God willing, you have more days to do it in. But if you just take a chunk out of what's the most important thing that you can do for that day and you do that, that's a win. Mm-hmm. We, we want to be so hard on ourselves. And I think I had to learn that because I'm a very type A personality and I am very high level functioning anxiety, which I didn't really realize until COVID hit um, that I am high functioning anxiety. And so we, people that are like me anyway, are very, um, we have to keep going. If we don't, we don't, we don't function well. Mm -hmm. So that means even if you don't have something to do, there's always a to-do list. Like it just is, but then you have to realize I don't have to do it all today. (laughs) That revelation, (laughs) that revelation, and I am a big believer in taking a nap, right? So I'll do like my little reels and all that. Take a nap. Like if you Mm -hmm. just get overwhelmed, if the day is too much, take a nap, right? Mm -hmm. And so if that means that I wake up later, but then I stay up later, I'm still getting the same amount of work done. Like unless you're with the constraints of like the eight to five, nine to five kind of thing, Mm -hmm. you're still getting work done. So as long as you get it done, then that's the biggest thing about it. And I mean, I like to be consistent with timelines Mm -hmm. and working with my clients and the things that I need to do. So for me, it is about balancing. And I don't mean, I I hate the word like work-life balancing, but it's to me about balancing what I'm going to do today. Mm. Not trying to worry about all of the rest of the days. What am I going to do today? What's going to make me feel good today? What can I accomplish today? And if I didn't get something done, okay, it's tomorrow. Right. Not beating yourself up about that. Cause then you're just focusing on what you didn't do instead of celebrating what you did do. Right. <laughs> and, yep. And so now I write it down. Like I literally, I'm like, I did this because I think that the, the average person, especially if they, if they work for themselves full time, you don't realize how many things that you did mm. And then the day is gone. So if I send an email, that's the thing that I write down that I send an e- email to somebody. If I paid a bill, if I, um, like when my, cause I, the way that I get paid is usually invoices and then they send checks. So right. if I got a check today, let me write that I got that check down and I deposited it in the bank, right? I mean, whatever the thing I did. So then when you look at your list, you did 10 things, but you only feel like you did one thing because that's the one major thing that was on your list. Did you make a phone call? Did you make a post online? Did you do a video? Did you do a lot? You did so much and you didn't even realize it. So it's celebrating the little wins. Yes. Yes. Cause I'm always surprised. Like I can spend six hours in front of the computer and I'm getting so much done, but I may only get one podcast thing done, but it's Mm -hmm. all the other pieces, the social media, the, the other things that you have to spend time in Canva. Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh yeah, I do get more Mm -hmm. than just the podcast done. It's okay. (laughs) Yeah. But you know what, in in doing that. So like, um, you know, for my husband, he, he used to just look at, oh, okay. You put the podcast out and I'm like, do do you, do you even, can you even fathom? How many steps go into doing the podcast? And I think that one of the main things is it's easier for me to do real ass affirmations because all I need is me, right? Mm -hmm. I do have an engineer that I work with to batch some stuff. And some of my latest episodes I've just been doing on my own, but I'm about to go back to the engineer thing because I just, uh, my life is easier. Um, But when I look at it and I say, this is what I want to record. This is how long the episodes are. I'm going to take two, three or four hours out of today and knock them out. Then that's fine. But then you need the graphics and then you need the descriptions and then you need. I mean, So people just listen Mm -hmm. and they don't understand how much goes into it. They don't understand the money that you have to spend in behind the scenes. They don't understand the marketing of it, the all of the things that go into it. So, you know, what I started to do was with everything that I do, develop a system so mm-hmm. that it's easier. Yeah. And if I give a client this system and they're like, okay, so I need, all you need to do is follow this. You do all of these things and it'll be successful. And when they listen and they follow the system then everything works. So that's why I'm saying yeah, it's so much chaos in the world and in your life and in what you have to do. But when you can calm down and really think about um, pretty much your assembly line for how you do things, mm-hmm. life is so much easier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, when I have my system. It takes a while to get that kind of worked out. So yep. having someone just hand it to you would be wonderful. It's <laughs> amazing. It took, it took a while to get everything kind of flowing and know when I'm going to do this and then I'm going to do this. And yeah. So 
Yeah. Wonderful. Now, is that something that you also talk about in your book or is this going to be part oh, of your no. summit? The podcast was not even a, a, a piece of thought when I, when I wrote this book because, you know, it just predates everything. But in the summit, yes. So one of the things that I do with my regular business anyway was business coaching. And so I decided, OK, well, we're going to do a specific set of um, coaching that's for people that do podcasts and that want to start them and that also want to grow them. And I think that for me, I'm not saying that, you know, I have the biggest podcast in the world, but in a short amount of time being able to I think we're now to like 130 some thousand downloads. Like, I think that that's an important factor, you know what I mean, to be able to get there. And, you know, my next step is sponsorship because I feel like that's important. I do make money with advertisement, but I would like more, right? So if you know that you want this to be a full-time thing, then you have to treat it like a full-time thing. Mm. And that's the biggest difference. When I was doing it before, it was because I wanted to because it was an outlet, but you have to make different choices now if you're going to make it full-time. So for me, you know, part of that is, well, if this is a new business in its sense or a new part of it, Mm -hmm. goals with it. And so I can still teach people the regular business stuff and how to start their business and everything, but focusing on people with podcasts and them growing their voice or mm -hmm. people that have a business that want to specifically do a podcast. If I just tell you, these are the things to do and you do it, this is where you put it. You don't need to go looking around and research and it probably costs less than some of these other companies. Cause I've seen some people charging some really astronomical rates oh. for things. And I understand that, but I've always been the person that is in tune with the small business owner. Mm -hmm. And how are you going to grow? You don't have to spend a couple of hundred dollars a month. That's for people that have that kind of money. But if you don't and you're just starting in the beginning, you're not going to make money. Yeah. So let's spend a little to know what we need to know and then grow it. And then you can you know, increase as you need to. So I think that to me, that's an important factor. And so we definitely will be talking about about stuff like that at the Give It to the People Summit um, because we are increasing what we're doing with the coaching side of business and then also slightly a little bit of the PR side slash admin virtual assistant side of things. Right. So, oh, cool. um, you know, those things are the things that are in need. And if you're in business, mm -hmm. you're supposed to fulfill a need. And that's just how we look at things. What do people need? Mm -hmm. Not just the bells and whistles, but if this is what you need and it's a small system and this is how you do it, let's get that. Right, right. And I do think there is power in knowing your strengths and then paying for someone either to help you or to educate you so that you don't spend time, mm -hmm. wasted time, not necessarily wasted because you learned something at the end of it, but just knowing your strengths. So focus mm -hmm. on those and then bring in someone to help you take the time to invest in uh, systems, programs that will help you move forward, not keep you in like a little spiral. <laughs> yeah. And you know so what? what I've looked at, I've seen a lot of people's things. I'll pay for courses just to see how a person lays something out. Um, and I'm not going to say that I've wasted money, even though sometimes it has felt like that, but it's how a person does it. And if it, if it is effective and I can adopt a piece of that to make my programming better, then okay. But right. sometimes people just give you the basic stuff that you can look up. Yeah. And I'm a why person. I've always been that type of person. Why do I need to do it this way? Is there an alternative? What else can I use? And so like, you know, I'll have clients, like I just had one the other day and she's saying, okay, well, look, I really want to change my website over. Now her website is dated and she does need to change her website over. And she's like, well, I'm thinking, you know, I want to get more into social media, but she doesn't really do social media like that. The last time she posted was 2019. Oh, yeah. So I'm like, okay, so you comparable price wise. Yeah, you could jump over to Shopify. But why did she want to go to Shopify? Because she's hearing Shopify, 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 right? That's what everybody's talking about. But guess what? Shopify does so much marketing that that's the kind of the go-to now, but it wasn't Shopify before Shopify was there, right? So mm -hmm. you have to kind of look at why people want things and then make it make sense to them. And I'm like, look, so what you're trying to do is you're trying to make sure that you can get more customers by the time that the holidays come in. It's almost November. Yeah. So you're going to have to change everything over to that. The learning curve of learning that just to get to there, you can just update your website. Mm-hmm. 
like, I understand what you want, but that's not necessarily what you need if you're looking at money and you're looking at time and you're looking at optimizing things. And so, you know, we talked about things that she can do and, you know, how I can help do some stuff. And then, of course, what happens with me is people say, well, can you just do it for me? Just tell me how much it is. <laughs> <laughs> I just do it for me. And I'm like, sure, yeah, we can do it for you. Yeah. But I don't, I don't try to tell people, just hire me. If I like to tell you what to do, and then you make the decision on if you want to do it yourself. To me, this is kind of like going back to biblical references. I could teach, I'd rather teach you how to fish, yeah. right? You know, because then you don't need to keep coming to me for the fish all the time. Right. But if you know how to do it, then come back when you need something else. And I feel like to me, I am that kind of learner. But I understand you just need to pay for things sometimes. Right. Right. Sometimes it's just easier. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Uh, let's see okay so what would uh what advice would you have for women because I I really I like focusing on women what advice would you have for a woman wanting to either start a business or a podcast and I know they're a little different but if you're starting a podcast you should think of it like a business oh I definitely agree with that I definitely agree with that and I mean um the biggest thing that I think you have to understand is who are you serving because it's not just about you I mean, you can go work a job and get money if it's just money. Um, you can chase something for a long time and not make the money that you want or that you feel like you deserve. Right. So if you're always in the position of serving somebody and they need your service or you make them really want your service because sometimes they don't need it, but they want it. If you could do one of the two of those things, you will always have a successful business. But with women, I would also say, think about not where you're at in your life right now, but where you want to be. And I'm not even telling you to go as far as five years. Do you know what I'm saying? When we wrote the night, when I wrote the 90 day focus in 90 days, what do you need to focus on in order to get there in the next 90 days, the next 90 days, the next 90 days. So when you really think about, okay, this is the lifestyle that I want to lead. Yeah. But I like to tell people to start out with this. How much do you want to make per month? Mm. Mm -hmm. because you have to figure out that once you know how much you want to make, you can figure out how to price your services. You can figure out who your target's going to be because they can afford your services. Mm -hmm. um, you can figure out how much time you want to invest on a weekly basis, a daily basis. And those things will help to fluctuate. So, you know, I give people an example. Let's just say, let's do something simple like 4,000 a month. If you said, I want to make 4,000 a month, it's a lot of ways to do that, right? right. That's a thousand dollars a week. OK, or you could have two clients and they're two thousand dollars a client and you only need two clients. But then how many hours are you spending with those clients? Um, you can have multiple products and they're at a certain rate and you need to sell a certain amount of products. So you have to kind of figure out the fact of what do you want to make? Mm -hmm. Where do you want to be? What's this going to pay? And then you can say, OK, well, this is definitely going to be a good business. And it helps you to prioritize everything else, in my opinion. Right. You're going to have to spend money. You will yeah. have to spend money. Yeah. But how quickly can you get it back? Like yeah. those to me are the questions. And so when I look at people starting their businesses and setting them up, I want them to be able to start to at least see something within the first 90 days. Mm -hmm. And if you have a good business and a good plan and you have the marketing together, and it's in my opinion, it's no reason you should be able to start to see something come back to at least break even within the first 90 days. Right. No, that's great. Great advice. <laughs> Ladies, check her out. She's amazing. Let's talk about just um, how people can connect with you and then yes. any events that people can attend virtually or live. Uh, okay. I'd love to go there. Thank you. You. So, okay, we're just going to really focus on more. So um, I'm just going to give you real ass affirmations first. It comes out every Monday at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then you can go ahead and you can get your Monday, your whole week started. And it's always going to be something that's funny, uplifting. Sometimes it's a little more serious because, you know, depending on the tone and the mood that I'm in, but that's a great way for you to get your week started. And if you want to go back and listen to some past episodes, go to reallastaffirmations.com. Um, as far as give it to the people, you can go to give it to the people.com and you will be able to find our give it to the people small biz summit, which is January 7th, 2022. And um, then this way you can do it virtually, or you can do it in person if you want to come to North Carolina. And as far as give it to the people, we are actually looking for more people 
And so this is BIPOC or women-owned businesses who would like to be interviewed. We've been ready to kind of change over some of our system because at She Podcast, Mm -hmm. I found a system that was better for recording. So I'm like, okay, we're Mm going to go that route. The plan is to still put it out on Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. And then people will be able to watch it on YouTube and some other platforms as well. But um, so far, so good. And I think that just things like this, you know, just opportunities to be on podcasts like yours really help to spread the message and help people to really find out other things that they can do because I don't want people to be stagnant, right? Like you always want to give people something motivational because I always tell people it's enough bad stuff in the world. If we can shine a little bit of light on somebody, you know, specifically Mm -hmm. women-owned businesses, because that's always been my focus, then that to me is empowering. Somebody may see this and say, oh, I want to start my podcast now, okay? That's the motivation that we need behind things. So um, just go to giveittothepeople.com or realassaffirmations.com and you'll be able to find me. And oh, if you're on Instagram, I'm at Chisa Penix Brown. So C-H-I-S-A-P-E-N-N-I-X-B-R-O-W-N. And then I'll be there, all kinds of colorful hair, um, being right? chocolate, <laughs> being chocolate with a big <laughs> smile, giving you all kinds of sassiness um, and just color and, and hopefully happiness comes through in the pictures and in and, and the things that we put out, just good energy oh, yeah. in the world. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's been such a pleasure chatting with you and connecting. I've loved it. So much good information. And I will run... um, your information across the top of the video. And then I'll also put it in all the description. So everybody has a way to connect and contact you. Yes. All right. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah. And to everybody out there, thanks for tuning in, listening, watching, stay safe, stay curious, and I'll see you next time.